Hi, this is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to do the unboxing and seasoning for the MPS 230, which is the Masterbuilt Propane Smoker. It's a 30-inch standard smoker. This is a two-door, which I really like because you can get the food in separately. And you can see it here. That's the picture of the box. Um, this box has been outside for a little while, so if it looks a little uh, faded, it is because it's been sitting in the sun. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open it up. Uh, for tools, I brought out one of my um, multi-tool boxes, and it's just one of those cheap boxes that you can keep in your car or whatever. And I'm just going to set this to the side, and hopefully what we need is in there, because uh, if you're anything like me, you've got little tools running all over the house, and uh, you always tell them, don't run around the house. But no, they're still doing it. So let's see if we can just cut this thing open. And I'm sure there's directions somewhere to tell you how to do it. Some of your larger smokers will have a cut on the bottom part where you just pull it out, but I'm not seeing any instructions on how to open it on this one. So we will cut this open right off the top. So I went ahead and just released the whole box because it was uh, fighting me here on the top. And by doing so, I'm able to just take all this stuff off and kind of just throw it to the side. So of course, right in the top, we have the most important part, which is the instruction manual. So you don't want to lose this. And uh, we will be following this, but I won't be going through it with you step by step. So let's go ahead and open the box here. And if you'll see this, all of the parts are conveniently packed inside the box in individual boxes. Each box is numbered one, two, three, four. Now, I haven't read through the directions yet, but we can assume that they did that for uh, packaging when they were assembling the smoker. So they probably prepackaged every box and have a pallet or a hundred pallets that all say one on them and two and three and four as such. And then just they know which one to load in there for each uh, smoker that they put together. And if you can see here, the cabinet is completely empty. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and move it over a little bit. And then we'll take a break while I open all these boxes and lay out all the parts. We have went through the whole box and set everything out on the table. If you can see, there's a variety of parts on the table here. Everything from the legs to the shelf holders to the burner to the uh, tray on, for the bottom and uh, uh, controls and handles and such. Water pan. And then on the side, I've left all of the racks in the box still, but we'll get to that when we get to that. And that way I'll have an opportunity to show you that. The assembly instructions are written down here in a multi-language format. So let's see if we can go like this and see if you can see that. And there's English and then a couple of other languages in here. And it just goes step by step, pretty easy to follow. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the legs on and then we're going to put the control panel on. And let's see if I can uh, show you that real quick. Actually, we'll take a break real quick and I'll clear a little bit of this stuff off and then I'll show you. So I went ahead and put the smoker on the ground here. But the first thing I want to tell you is that along with taking everything out of the smoker, you also need to take the doors off and they're simply held on by gravity. So you've got these pins that slide into the holes and they just pop right off, which also makes it really convenient for cleaning. And then you just set these aside before you move the smoker around. So we have these legs and they're all, other than this one with this on it, they're all identical. So when you go to put the legs on, I forgot to mention that there are two holes in this one leg also. So it goes opposite of this other one on the front for the control panel to mount into. So 
So here we have the control panel, and since we're working upside down, you want to place this in upside down. I like to just set it here temporarily while I get the screws ready. You can place these first two screws in from the back like that, and then I'll try to line that up <laughs> without knocking them out, I was going to say. Like before, you just get it started. Get that one a little tighter, and then this one a little tighter, not completely tightened down. And then if everything works out, these other two should be really close, and you should just be able to put the screw in. And once you get to the last one, you should be able to tighten it all the way down. and then go back through and uh, tighten up all the other ones. And there you go. And on to the next page. So the next step is the burner. And so far, nothing has been uh, confusing about this. So what we're going to do is we're going to line the pipe up with the input nozzle on the control and just set it there. And then we're going to take this and attach it to the starter. So we line that tube up and then slide it on in there. And it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to force it or anything. It should just kind of pop right on. So once I get all the screws in, before I tighten it down, the next thing I do is push it all the way forward so it will be as close to the nozzle as possible. Um, I believe it's also called a Venturi, and it sprays propane through the regulator no uh, knob and sets it into the burner area. Once you get that pushed in there all the way to the front, then tighten it down. The igniter here that we plugged in at the beginning of this step is the button here with the battery and then you have the other part here which is uh, um, the igniter stick itself and all of this stuff is replaceable if it goes bad. Once we get all this put in then we have a cover to go underneath that. Now I'm not exactly sure what the cover is called but I believe that it functions as a uh, windshield so that way you get ventilation for the fire but you don't get gusts of wind blowing up in there. All right, now that we have the bottom all assembled and including the legs and the firebox itself, let's go ahead and flip this over. Next thing that we're gonna add is gonna be the handles. So these are the large handles and they just go on the sides. We're just gonna put a screw in one of them and then go ahead and lightly, about halfway there. and then all the way on the second one. And then come back to the first one, and done. And done. So the next thing, it's calling for the thermometer. So go ahead and rehang this door. I don't know if it's I don't know if the door is supposed to stay on there, but we put it on. Easy enough to take back off if we need to, so no worries there. There is a wing nut on the back of the thermometer. 
And uh, a lot of times I find that these things are not very accurate. Uh, so you wanna test it for accuracy and then either adjust or else replace it, one of the two. Okay, so once you get the wing nut threaded on there, go ahead and close the door a little bit and line up your thermometer so that way it's dead center top. And then finish off tightening it. Just gonna kind of push it down a little bit and then slowly tighten it until it's nice and snug. Just like that. Next is the door handles and these ones have the springs on them. So that way when you go to grab them that they're not hot. I do recommend that you go slowly when you first put your hand on it, just in case. And uh, these are the largest screws in the package. So they're a little bit larger than the other ones. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that first one through the hole. Give it a little turn. These ones usually are the easiest ones to do by hand to get them started. And then we'll just hit it with the screwdriver. And we still have the other door off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on there real quick before I do that. Got the handle on there and then just like that, all tight. Now I've learned a trick with these master built doors and with some of the other ones that if they are a little too tight where the two doors come together down here in the bottom, what you can do is find a washer that's kind of narrow and put it on the top hinge. By putting it in between the two right on the stud, it'll act as a spacer and it will lift the door up just a little bit and that can make all the difference on having a nice smooth close. Now, these don't have gaskets, so if you want a gasket, you can add one, but I'm not a big fan of using too much on the gasket, especially on the top. On the bottom where the burner is, I like to create that nice tight seal, but on the top, if we lose a little bit of smoke, it doesn't really bother me because I think it encourages good airflow. So the next step that we have is putting in these hangers. These are the shelf hangers, and they just go in slots right along the side. So when you're putting these hangers in, you start from the bottom, you go to the top, and then you'll really be able to see where you want them and place them in the first time. Now you can always move these, they are adjustable, and it looks like that there is a, a total of seven different holes in there, but you're gonna put the water pan near the bottom, so you wanna be able to adjust these other ones. I'm gonna hold these off for a second and get that other stuff in there, and then we'll figure out where we're going. So the directions call to insert all the shelves, but I'm only gonna insert one for right this minute. All right, why don't you come down here and take a look inside with me here. So I put those two rails down here on the very bottom right there. Then I'm gonna take and put this right down here on the bottom. Then, I'll insert that just like that. And the bottom section is complete. The other thing that we have down here is we have this. And when we put this together, there's a little hook right on the back here. And I'll uh, take a picture of that and then you can see it. So here's that picture. I just went ahead and I pushed that hook up through that hole and then turned it sideways to get it to lock in place. That little bowl is your drip tray. So all your oil and stuff will drip into there and then you'll be able to go ahead and dispose it. I recommend that if you're cooking a lot of oily stuff that you go ahead and line that with foil and just take a foil, piece of foil that's way bigger than it, fold it in half, put it in, crush it into the bottom of there and when it gets full, you just fold the foil up and throw it in the garbage. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. And uh, we're gonna break the uh, setup and the seasoning video for the Masterbuilt MPS 230 into two pieces because we ran a lot longer than what I had planned on. You know, you think that it's only gonna take a few minutes to set up something and then it ends up taking a little longer, but I like to follow the directions really close when I'm making a video for you. If you are interested in any of the things that I use in the videos, you will find affiliate links below. Those are links to Amazon and I will get compensated for those, so I do appreciate it. If you wanna watch the second part of the video, if you're watching it right when it releases, I'm gonna release that 15 minutes later. If not, go look in the YouTube channel's video list and it should be the next video down past the setup video for the 230. So I appreciate you watching and have a great day.